everybody. I'm Rachel from Rachel Cooks with Love. We're up here in the Texas Hill Country right by the Frio River and it is frigid. We came up here for the weekend and we are enjoying ourselves a lot. I'm here with my sister and my very dear friend Laura and our husbands. I'm gonna be fixing a fantastic ham and potato and corn chowder and I think you're gonna love it. I think we've had enough of this cold weather so we're gonna go inside and get started on that. I'll see you in a little bit. So we're gonna start out with some bacon. And I've got my Dutch oven right here on the stove and it's getting nice and hot. So I'm gonna start out by chopping the bacon. We decided to make this uh, ham and corn and bacon delicious chowder. And you know, we got here last night and it was getting cold, but today it got super cold. And this is just gonna be so perfect. Do we have the celery cut up? Yeah. Is that what you're working on? I'm working on it. I'm gonna do the potatoes and the celery. Oh, great. I think I'm gonna eat more than what I'm gonna cut up. Because <laughs> they're delicious and sweet. They're fresh, warm, grown. Fresh. And they're delicious. Yes. They're delicious. I'm not gonna just eat them all day. Oh, I love carrots too, especially with a good dip. Laura, you were talking about a really good dip that you can make with that. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just Greek yogurt and Hidden Valley Ranch dip mix. But do you put in the, what kind of yogurt, like the plain? Plain Greek yogurt. Plain Greek yogurt. Let's see. That sounds, I need to make that, Laura. Super easy and delicious. I've never made it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my bacon in here. I've got my Dutch oven. Nice and hot, and I've got it set on about medium. I do want a nice golden color on it like that. You don't want to cook it in real high heat because you don't want it to burn on you too quick. So I think that medium heat is good. I'll give it a few minutes and then I'll come back and stir it around a little bit. Yes? You want to cut up the onion over? It's right here. And the corn. To, uh, so Rachel taught me to do this in a bowl so it doesn't splatter all over the counter. Yeah. We got ourselves some fresh baby corn. It's going to be perfect for this dish. The onions are going to make me cry or tear up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> See? Mm, this was good bacon. Nice and thick bacon. It doesn't have to be thick bacon, you know, you can just use regular bacon. But if you have thick bacon, that's even better. Did you see those icicles on the porch? Yes. On the porch? Yes. Oh my gosh, I saw that. This smells delicious. I'm hungry already. Are you hungry, Lori? I'm starving. I'm starving. Look at this. Oh, yummy. Look at this toasted That's gonna bread go right here. That's going to with a soup. Mm. Yes. And you know, you can use just any kind of bread that you like. Sourdough bread is fantastic. You can use ciabatta bread, slice it up, or just some, you know, good home-baked bread. This was a long baguette, and we just sliced it up. We just rubbed a little butter on it and toasted it in the oven for just a few minutes until it got to a nice golden brown like this. You can use any type of bread that you like. So we've got these ready. This smells delicious, Rachel. It does? The bacon? Are you going to oh chop the barley? I'm going to mince it. You want to mince it for me? It's already sealed. Yeah. Yes. You can use any any type of ham that you want as long as it's pre-cooked, smoked. Now I like smoked ham. And we just cut it up into cubes like this and we've got it ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and take my bacon out. Rachel, is this going to be enough ham or do you want more? I think it's going to be perfect. Okay. Now there's a lot of bacon grease in here and I don't want all that bacon grease in here. I want some of it but not a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of that out too and just leave a little bit in here. I would say maybe two tablespoons. I'm going to go ahead and put all the ingredients and the amounts that I used 
right here on the screen. And I'm also going to put them below in the description box so you'll know exactly what I use and how much. So I have removed my bacon out of my Dutch oven and I've left just a little bit of the bacon grease in here. I'm going to go ahead and put my onions in here now. Ready, Rachel? Yes. Sorry. Laura, are you done with the carrots? Uh, yes. You want to dump them into the pot? Look at the, the green and the orange. It smells so good. Celery in there too. Woohoo! I'm going to put in some fresh thyme. Now if you don't have fresh thyme to put in, you can just use your ground thyme. And that will work just fine too. Just See? You can use this if you don't have the fresh thyme. You just peel it back like this and all your little leaves should fall in like this. We're ready for the garlic. I'm going to put in the garlic and let it release its flavor in with the rest of the ingredients in the pot. I'm getting so hungry. It smells delicious. I'm going to go ahead and put in my fresh thyme. Now I'm going to put in some ground thyme also. I like the combination of both. I like the way the fresh thyme looks, and I like the way the ground thyme tastes. So I'm going to add my thyme in like this, see? Now with the thyme, we're going to stir it around because I want all the flavors to come in together. And you know, we had that bacon grease in there. So once the onions went in there and they started sizzling in the grease, oh, you can smell them right away, and that means they are releasing their flavor with the celery and the green onions and the carrots. Now that the garlic and the thyme have gone in there, oh my gosh, this is just smelling fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and put in some salt. Now you can put in as much as you want. I'm not gonna put in that much because I am gonna be using some chicken broth okay. and my chicken broth does have some salt in it so I don't wanna overdo it. But as soon as I put in my next ingredient, you'll wanna be tasting it slowly. You want to make sure that it's got just enough of the salt for you because you can always add some more but you cannot take it out if you put in too much. I'm going to give my garlic my thyme about one minute before I go into the next step. I've got some flour here. This is just plain old purpose flour. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit because this is going to be our thickener. You know, our flour is going to be our thickener. We're going to call it a chowder because of the flour and the milk that we're going to be putting in there. So I'm going to put in a little bit of flour, just a little bit at a time, like that. I'm going to add a little bit more, like that, and give it a nice stir. You don't want to put in raw flour at the end after you put in your milk. So it's always good to put it in the beginning like this. You see, and you continue to stir it around, and it's getting golden brown and getting toasty. And then we add our milk. See, all our vegetables are well coated. And let them sizzle a little bit at the bottom. Now that my flour has gotten nice and toasty, see, see the bottom? All of that's gonna come off once we put in our broth and our milk. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my broth right here. This is chicken broth. Now you can use low sodium or you can just use, you know, just your regular chicken broth. This is not low sodium, this is just regular, you know, chicken broth. That's why I'm being very careful in how much salt I put in there because I don't want to overdo it. See? So now that I've put in my broth, I'm gonna add my milk. Just like that. Give it a nice stir. And I'm going to raise my heat up a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it sit there and come up to a light boil. Now, as you can see, it's just come up to a really light boil. 
I'm gonna go ahead and lower the temperature to a real nice low boil. You don't wanna cook this chowder really, really fast. As I've said before, you know, it's always best when you cook everything nice and slow enough for all the flavors to come in together really nice. Now at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and add my potatoes. Now these are russet potatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and add them in here, just like that. Now as you can see, it's on low, and there's just a little bubble here and there, which is what we want, because we don't wanna cook this really, really quick. We want it to be a little slow, a little long. That's gonna give all the ingredients time to come in together and give you the best flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and taste it. Make sure that it's got just the right amount of salt. This would be a good time for you to check it and adjust it. Oh my gosh, that is so perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and add some black pepper. Just like that. Now that I've tasted it and adjusted the salt and added my pepper, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the lid. Oh my goodness, look at this. Now it's at this time that I'm gonna go ahead and add my corn. Now this is fresh corn, so you wanna give it a few minutes. My potatoes are getting to where I want them to be. They're almost tender, just the way I want them, so I'm gonna add my corn. Now that I put in my corn like this, I'm gonna give it just a few minutes until my corn is ready and my potatoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace the lid and then we'll be back. So my potatoes are nice and tender now, and so is my corn, it's ready. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my ham, right here. See? And I'm gonna go ahead and add my bacon, put it back in. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace my lid and give it about three minutes, and then our chowder is ready. Our chowder is ready. Come on, let's go serve. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the stove. Oh my goodness, look at this. Mm. I'm gonna get this nice and close right here. Look at that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit of parsley up here at the top. Like this. So our chowder is ready and we're all served. Now it's time for the taste test. Mm. Mm. What do you think, guys? Yum. Very good. Absolutely. Outstanding. Oh, outstanding. Fabulous. So hearty and so warm and so delicious. Mm. So this is my ham, corn, and bacon chowder. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up, send me a comment, and tell me what you think. And do share with your friends. Thank you. Yummy.